Today we're going to be comparing two of the best cruiser motorcycles on the market, the Harley Davidson Heritage Classic 114 and the BMW R18 Classic. We're also going to talk about some other models and manufacturers in this video too. Now some of the other bikes that you might consider um, would be the Triumph Rocket 3, maybe the GT because it's a bit more of a touring capability, the Indian Springfield or the Springfield Dark Horse and the Harley Davidson Road Glide. Now all those bikes have similar rakes um, which means they have similar handling um, so they're more comparable to each other than they are to these two bikes. If you wanted a bike of this sort of style I think these two are the most similar to compare. So we're going to start by comparing the bikes on various different points. We'll start from the front of the bike and finish at the back. And we're going to award a point to either bike, depending on which one is the better bike on that round. And if they're the same, then neither gets a point. Now, both of these bikes have the same size front wheel and tire. So that's one of the factors that gives them their similar handling. Um, but the BMW has a double disc brakes at the front and the calipers on the BMW are styled really nicely and the Heritage Classic only has a single disc brake on the front um, so the stopping power on the BMW is a little bit better so one point to the BMW. The next point is the dial. Now on the R18 the dial's at the front between the handlebars and on the Harley Davidson it's on the tank so on the Harley you have to look down more and you sort of take your eyes off the road and the R18 dial is absolutely beautiful it's a nice small size it's chromed it's easy to read you can see the the gear indicator uh, you can see the RPM and the speed very easily um, so I will award one point to the BMW R18 for the dial. Now the second point we're going to talk about is mud guards. The BMW R18 Classic has a much more minimal mud guard, so it's quite a bit smaller, and the Heritage Classic one is quite a bit larger. Um, the styling is obviously subjective, whichever one you prefer. Um, I think the shape and styling of the Heritage Classic um, is slightly nicer in my opinion. I like how it comes down very low and it sort of flicks out. It's kind of Mexican style, like the if you've seen Mayan's MC on the telly, it's that sort of style, which is really cool. Um, but practicality-wise, the Heritage Classic is going to keep more mud off the bike, so you're going to have to do a little bit more cleaning on the R18, so therefore one point to the Heritage Classic. Now the next point we're going to come to is on the handlebar area. Both of them have ride-by-wire throttles, but the BMW R18 Classic has three modes. Um, the Harley Davidson has one mode, but it's not a mode you can change, so it's in a mode all the time. Um, the only way to change it on the Harley is to get a tuner, that's a cost of upwards of £300 or your dealer can do it. With the R18 you've got rock and roll and rain, so you've got your three modes which are easy to change on the move. Um, so I think because of that the R18 gets the point. Now the next point is screens. The screen on the R18 Classic is a little bit smaller than that of the Heritage Classic um, one thing I do like about the R18 screen is that it's completely clear, whereas the one on the Heritage Classic is half blacked out on the bottom, um, which means that your immediate view is slightly worse, but it's not really a massive problem. Um, but as the screen is bigger, it does do its job better and keeps the wind off you a little bit more than the R18 Classic, so therefore one point to the Heritage. Next point is the suspension now. The suspension on both bikes is very equal. You've got a very similar ride with both these bikes, uh, so no winner there. So next we're going to talk about bags. Now both bikes have very similar sized bags, uh, or panniers, whatever you want to call it. Um, they're slightly different styling, so it's up to you on that one, that's subjective. Um, the Heritage has a locking mechanism, so that's a bit of a bonus, but it's slightly harder to get stuff in it because of the way that the locking mechanism sticks out. Um, the R18 Classic comes with an inner liner with the bike, um, the Heritage doesn't, um, and you get bolts to fill in the um, holes when you take the bags off, and with the Heritage you have to buy them separately. Um, but overall I think it's kind of even 
on the bag side of things. Now, next on the list is the engine. Both bikes have massive torquey engines, and as engines that work to move the motorcycle along, they both work very well indeed. Um, the BMW has a characteristic lean to the left when you blip the throttle, and a lean to the right when you come off the throttle, uh, more so in neutral uh, when the bike's still, but it does it a little bit when you're moving. Um, both shake and rock and roll when they're still, which is kind of cool. The Harley-Davidson engine is narrower, the BMW engine sticks out more. So really the BMW, um, because of the engine sticking out more, the cylinders are in the way and you don't ideally want a motorcycle to lean one way or the other on a throttle on or off position. Uh, we'll give the point to the Harley-Davidson. Now we're going to talk about the stand. Uh, the stand on the R18 Classic is definitely better than the Heritage Classic. Um, it comes out a lot further and it's much more secure in place. It kind of scoots up at the end so it doesn't tend to grab on any objects. Whereas if there's a crack in the ground or something with the Heritage and any Harley to be honest, it will grab that and you kind of don't know whether it's on the stand. Once it's on the stand, it's fine, but there is a slight problem with um, not knowing whether the bike's going to fall over, and it actually has in the past, so um, definitely one point to the R18 for that one. Next point to cover is the gears. Now both have six speeds. Um, the Harley-Davidson gearbox is clunky, as we all know, but that's not a fault, it's just the way it is. It's a characteristic. Uh, the BMW gearbox is smoother through the gears, um, but it's a little bit vague when going from neutral to first sometimes. Uh, so on that point, I'd say they sort of balance out, so no winner there. Now the seat on the Heritage Classic is a little bit more soft. The seat on the R18 is slightly more firm and a little bit more grippy than the seat on the Heritage Classic. Um, the, someone said about whether the badge on the seat of the BMW gets in the way, but you don't feel that when you're sitting on it. Um, but I think overall the seats are kind of subjective, so we're not going to give a point to either bike on that. Next point is the foot position. With the Harley-Davidson, you've got the floorboards and forward controls. With the BMW R18, you've got the mid controls. Um, because there's no cylinders in the way on the Harley, you can have your feet extended and it's more comfortable for your knees on longer rides. And if you want to, you can bring your toes back like this to be in effectively the mid control position with your toes on the end. So you've got more versatility with the Harley-Davidson. Um, so therefore the Harley wins that point. This next point, we're gonna talk about the reverse. The Heritage Classic doesn't have a reverse gear and this R18 Classic and the normal R18 have a reverse. It's like an electric motor. And this is really, really a game changer. If you've ever ridden a heavy bike, you'll realize that when you're maneuvering it about, it's really difficult to um, get it anywhere, really. Um, especially if you're on a little bit of a slope and you're trying to move the bike backwards, it's almost impossible. And I've seen a lot of people struggling, um, not even just on the heritage, on all sorts of heavy tourers and cruiser motorcycles. Um, it's definitely a big problem. Um, and this BMW R18 completely eliminates that. Uh, the only other thing I've seen a reverse gear on is a Harley Davidson trike. So. Um, I mean, it's nice to have it on a two-wheel motorcycle, especially of this weight, so definitely one point to the R18 Classic there. Now to the exhaust. The BMW R18 has quite a nice sounding standard exhaust actually, um, but of course you can get aftermarket pipes for both these bikes, and we know that Harleys sound amazing and as loud as you want. Um, in standard form with the standard pipes, they don't sound nearly as loud, um, and that's to meet the regulations and what have you. Um, but it's just sort of, um, it's basic science that the BMW with the right pipes would sound really loud and amazing because they're big massive cylinders dumping their uh, exhaust into a big hole. So uh, they're both going to sound pretty amazing depending on the pipes, so no clear winner there, so even Stevens on that one.
Now the next thing we're going to talk about is the fuel tank. Um, looks wise, it's completely subjective. Um, both look nice to me. Um, they're slightly different shapes and sizes. Um, so it's really up to you on that one. The R18 Classic has a 16 litre capacity and the Heritage Classic has an 18.9. So you've got a little bit more on the Heritage Classic. And the fact that the Heritage Classic has a fuel gauge um, and the R18 doesn't makes the Heritage Classic win this point. Handling next. Now both bikes have very similar handling. Uh, the BMW is a little bit longer in the wheelbase and has a 32.7 degree rake, whereas the Harley has a 30 degree rake. Um, perhaps this is one area Harley could sort of take note and um, the, the, the dimensions of the R18 are the perfect dimensions for a cruiser. Absolutely no doubt about that. And Harley Davidson have dropped the brake out. Um, they kind of need something between the Heritage Classic and where the breakout was, which would be more like the R18. Um, but on balance, um, taking the bike as a whole, uh, with the engine and the extra weight of the BMW and the way the Harley is, I'd say the handling is about the same. So both bikes are at five points each and there's no clear winner on paper. What it comes down to at the end of the day is which flavor you prefer. Um, it's a bit like eating food. If you eat Chinese food all the time and you love your Chinese food, after a few weeks you think, I fancy an Indian. And then if you eat Indian for a few weeks, you think, mm, I fancy a Chinese again. Um, and it's the, the kind of similarities between these two bikes are like Indian and Chinese food. Um, they're both fabulous bikes, but they're both different flavors. So they have different characters. Um, the BMW has masses and masses of character. So does the Harley Davidson, um, but in a different way. So you have to make that decision uh, yourself, which bike would be right for you. Um, but either choice, would be a fabulous choice. Now, BMW have really raised the bar with these sort of motorbikes, love it or hate it, and it is a love-hate bike by the sound of things from the comments we've been having on our videos. Um, but they have raised the bar. The reverse option is a game changer. The dimensions of this bike are absolutely perfect for a cruiser motorcycle. Harley-Davidson need to make something between the Breakout and the Heritage Classic with a little bit more rake and um, the sort of dimensions of this, a slightly longer wheelbase. Then you've got the perfect cruiser. So mate this chassis to a V-twin engine and you've got the world's best cruiser. So whoever does that first, is going to be there. Thanks very much for watching the video. Let us know in the comments section below which bike you choose. Um, I think it's very subjective really, but um, we'd like to know your thoughts on which one you think is the better bike. Um, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel for plenty more content. Um, we've got a Triumph Trident review coming soon, so you don't want to miss that. And make sure you check out our t-shirt store. Um, they're in the carousel below and there's plenty more on the website. I'm wearing one of the hoodies right now, so um, definitely give that a look if you want to support our channel. Another thing um, that's very good about the BMW R18 is that whichever side you look at the bike from, it's just as beautiful. So one side is a reflection of the other. Um, with the Harleys, a lot of them are beautiful from this side, but the left-hand side isn't as pretty as the right-hand side. It's almost sort of slightly neglected. So um, Harley could learn a thing or two from the BMW on that point.